weapons are done away with. Okay, give me uh, John uh, Matthew 5, 17. Yeah. How you doing? That's what I want to show you. Okay, cool. So what we out here to do is, right, we out here to reinstitute the laws of God, right? Because a lot of people, get in front of us right quick. You good. So a lot of people do believe that the laws of God are done away with, but that's because they don't understand that there were five sets of laws, right? You had the civil law, you had the ceremonial law, you had the dietary law, you had the, um, what am I missing? Um, civil, civil law, ceremonial law, dietary law, moral law, and there was another one. Sacrificial. The sacrificial. Read what you got. Book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. Think not that I am come to destroy the law Read. or the prophets. Read. I am not come to destroy, Read. but to fulfill. Read. Now, see, I'm sorry. This is where everybody gets hung up on, right? They say, see that? He came to fulfill. Let's read the next part. Read. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, Read. one jot or one tittle uh -huh. shall in no wise pass from the law uh -huh. till all be fulfilled. Is heaven and earth still here today? Give me John 1 verse 29. So heaven and earth is still here today, right? So he said one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Has the second coming of Christ happened yet? No. No. Has the 144,000 woke up yet? No. no. So, all, so the laws cannot be done away with. I'm going to show you what law he did away with. Read. Book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. Uh -huh. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and uh -huh. saying, what? Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. What was a lamb used for in the Old Covenant? Say it again. The herd. Right, but so why, why would we kill a lamb in the Old Covenant? What was it called? It was sacrifice. Sacrifice. So what we would do was, let's say you committed a sin, right? When you committed a certain sin, that had to, it, had to, it had to have a certain criteria behind it, right? Let's say I had sex with your wife. There's no sacrifice for that. I have to die. You see what I'm saying? Right. But now there's certain sins. So what, give me Acts 13, 38. There's certain sins, like I'll give you an example for stealing. If you stole, that's not punishable by death. But you did have to repay it sevenfold. But you didn't get put to death for it. So certain laws you died for and certain laws you didn't. But it, that, so the animal was based on that. So when Christ came on the scene, he was called the Lamb of God. Let me show you out. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 38. Come on. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, right. that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Come on. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. So Christ had to come because there were certain, our people had gotten so far away from the laws of God that, we, that they couldn't sacrifice anymore. There was adultery going on in the land. There was murders of brothers going on in the land. Brothers were sleeping each, with each other's wives. Brothers was eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. They was, uh, they were sacrificing, uh, they were sacrificing to false idols in the temple of God. Christ had to come so that way we could we could return back to the Father because we broke the covenant. When we broke the covenant, that it now the old covenant that you read about of animal sacrifice is null and void now. So now there's no sacrifice for our sins. Give me um uh, John five and verse forty five. So what I'm showing you is that the laws of God are still here. For example, I, should I kill? That's the law of God. See what I'm saying? Should I eat? Um, I'm gonna use so, so basically you're saying we, we basically pick and choose what laws to follow. That's what we're doing. But who taught us that? Bring it out. Perception. Mass perception. The Christian church taught it to us. The Christian church taught us that all God's laws are done away with and that we're all equal under Jesus Christ because they are trying to escape judgment. Yeah, don't God love God? You play the drums at the church, right? You play drums okay, I got you. Watch this. The book of John. Chapter 5, verse 45. Come on. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. Three. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, uh -huh. in whom ye trust. Three. For had ye believed in Mo believe Moses, uh -huh. ye would have believed me. So the Bible says, had you believed Moses, so he's talking to the Pharisees, right? He's telling the Pharisees, you say you believe Moses, how come you don't believe me? Watch, read. For he wrote of me. Moses was writing about the coming of Christ. Right. Everything that Moses wrote about, it came from the Spirit of Christ. Read. But if ye believe not his writings, uh -huh. how shall ye believe my word? So now in today's time, if you don't go and study Moses, or you don't know his words, how are you going to believe Christ? Right. 
Where, 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 do, where, do Grace, where do we apply the grace in? Romans chapter 6. I got you. Break it out. Romans chapter 6. Because grace, remember, I'm going to read two scriptures, right? Right. right. Grace no. is, but can you willfully sin because of grace? No. No. Okay, I'm going to show you. Read. The book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. What shall we say then? Uh -huh. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So shall we continue sinning because we're under grace? No, you shouldn't let that. No. Okay. God forbid. Read. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? The Bible says if we are dead to sin, how do we live any longer therein? I'll give you an example. If I'm an adulterer, right? And I say that I repent from my adultery, right? But then tomorrow, Oh, that was, so if I cease from it, that's what it means to be dead. Let me backtrack. Yeah. When I cease from it, that means I died, right. Right? right? So now if you see me tomorrow committing adultery, am I dead to the sin? No, no I'm still alive and well in the sin. Right. But that grace doesn't apply to me then. I'm going to show you my, uh, right quick. Titus, Titus 2 and 11. Yes, sir. Two and Titus 2 and 11. Go ahead. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all appeared to all men, teaching us that teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. The Bible says that we're supposed to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's what grace is supposed to do. It's supposed to teach you how to live in the world. So now watch this. Give me Hebrews 10 and verse 26. But not of the world, right? So I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what Paul said. Read. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. Come on. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no sacrifice for sin. So now there's no sacrifice for your sin if you are willfully doing it. If you are willfully sinning, there's no sacrifice. Now I want to deal with the word that was in Titus, right? He said we should live righteously. Right quick, give me, um, give me, um, uh, uh, yes, yes. Get Deuteronomy 625. And then we're going to go to, um, and then I want to go to, because uh, I, I want to deal with a, a question that you asked before you leave. Read this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. The Bible says to be righteous means that you have to be doing the commandments of God. That's what the Bible says, right? So now, um, um, Romans 5 in the last verse, right above 6, and then I want Romans 9. Because you asked the question, right? You said, does God love everybody? I'm going to answer that with the Bible, and I want you to decide if God loves everybody based on what the Scripture says. Okay, read what you got. The book of Romans, chapter 5 and verse 21. Out of verse 20. Verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. So the law had to come, so that way the people would know you are in error. Read. But where sin abounded, uh -huh. grace did much more abound. So now he said where sin abounded, okay, now grace is going to much more abound. The death of Christ is going to cover all sin. Right, Read. That as sin hath reigned unto death, uh -huh. even so might grace reign, unto, yeah. reign through righteousness Come on. unto eternal life Read. by Jesus Christ our Lord. Read. What shall we say then? No, no, I'm sorry, read verse 21 again. Verse 21. Uh -huh. That as sin hath reigned unto death, uh -huh. even so might grace reign through righteousness. The Bible says grace has to come through righteousness. Grace is only applied when you're keeping the commandments of God. You do not have grace if you're not keeping God's commandments. Now, Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. I'm going to show you something. And you tell me if God loves everybody. Go ahead. Romans chapter 9, seven. verse 7. Three. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children of are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Are you familiar with the covenants? The, the, the lineage? Okay. So the Bible says, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Because Abraham had a lot of sons, right? right. But there was only one specific son that the promise would go to. Read. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Read. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. What did the Bible just say? Everybody is not a child of God. Read it That's up. right. 
everybody is not the children of God. Right. There's only one people that is the children of God, and that are the that's the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. right. But right. But through Christianity, we've been taught that God loves everybody. Right. Because why? If God loves everybody, and we can all be forgiven what they did to us in slavery. It becomes null and void. It becomes null and void. So Christianity has done a so, great double on our people. So when, when they take it away from the Christianity aspect, it's more of a... Of a uh, Is racist. Bring it out. Throw me 28 verse. Well, finish that. No, finish that. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The children of the promise was always counted for the seed. Verse 13. Verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Do God hate? That's what the Bible just said. Read it again. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. The Bible says that the Lord hated Esau. Bring it out. But I thought that God loved everybody. I thought that we were all children of God. I thought that everybody was going to get into the kingdom of heaven. Clearly, these people are not going to get to the kingdom of heaven. Bring it out. He said he hated them. You got what I want? But, but his best friend betrayed him. He never, he never forgot where he is. Who? He never told him to leave. Right, he hung himself. Remember, the Bible says, woe, woe unto the world for offense sake, but even more woe to those that he come by. So you're right. He, could Judas have maybe possibly been forgiven? Who knows? But the Bible says he killed himself. So guess what he died in? His sin. Bring it out. He died in his sin. So judge, he got he had to get his judgment. You understand? Know Bring what you got. This is the book of Malachi, chapter one, verse two. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein has thy loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? saith the Lord. Yet I loved Jacob and hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Where is Edom saith? We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord had indignation forever. The Bible says that he will have hatred for them forever. Bring it out. So now the question is, who the hell is Esau? Bring it out. Who is Esau? Because we have the problem, the, the word, the root word in scripture is script. Right. The Bible is a script of how world events will play out. Bring it out. The problem is nobody knows the characters. Bring it out. So now we're going to identify the character. I want Obadiah. Obadiah chapter 1. I'm going to show you the characteristics of Esau and you tell me who this man is. I'm going to show you something. Once you understand the characters, you understand the story. You understand who the main character is. You under, What is it? The antagonist and right. the protagonist. Bring it out, huh? you got to understand those people. Right. If you don't understand the characters in the Bible, you're not going to understand the book. Bring it out. This is the book of Obadiah, chapter 1. On. The vision of Obadiah. Huh? Thus saith the Lord God Bring. concerning Edom. So this is concerning the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Read. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So the Bible says that the nation of Edom in the last days would be greatly despised. What nation on the earth is greatly despised today? Bring it out. Say it. You can say it. Huh? The so-called Caucasian man. Bring it out. The Bring most despised man. Everywhere he go, that follow. Everywhere he go, that follow. Okay, read. The pride of thine heart had deceived thee, thou that dwelleth in the cleft of the rock. What's the word Caucasian mean? What's the word Caucasian mean, my brother? Hold on, don't go. Let me finish this one and I'm going to let you go. Let me finish this one. What's the word Caucasian mean? Caucasian white. 
Right, well, what is it? It says, what, the word caucus comes from where? The Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Right. So the Bible says that Esau would be from the mountains. They said that dwells in the class of the rock. Didn't Caucasians come from the class of the rock? Read out. Oh. Okay, read. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, Read. thou that dwellest in the cliff of the rock, Read. whose habitation is high, Read. that save in his heart, Read. who shall bring me down to the ground? Read. Thou thou exalt thyself as the eagle. As the what? As the eagle. What nation of people exalt themselves? Somebody give me a dollar. Who got a dollar? Yep. Anybody yep. got a dollar? Yep. I'm going to huh? Oh, we got a sign? Let me see the sign. Watch this. Watch this. Take a look at this. The Bible says, the Bible says what? Read it again. Don't I do what? Don't thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Look at the Greeks. Yeah. The Greek coin. What's yeah. on the back? What's that? What bird is it? That's an eagle. It's an eagle. Yeah. The Roman coin. What's mm -hmm. on the back? The Spanish coin. What's on the back? The American coin. Bring it out. What's on the back? What's this? Who who symbolize who uses the symbol of the eagle for everything? Bring it out. Caucasian Bring it out, huh? The Bible is showing you that the Caucasians are the people against whom the Lord have indignation against forever. That's right. That's what the Bible says. Bring it out. So now you got to ask yourself, do you believe it? Because it's what the Bible says, right? Read. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, Read. and though thou set thy nest among the stars, Read. This will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. The Bible says, I'm going to bring you down to the ground, saith the Lord. Read, you got to go back to work. Read verse 17. Verse 17. But upon Mount Zion uh -huh. shall be deliverance, uh -huh. and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob uh -huh. shall possess their possessions. Uh -huh. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. So the Bible says the house of Jacob, that's us, we're going to be a fire. And the house of Joseph, a flame. That's the northern kingdom. And the house of Esau, for stubble. So the people who represent themselves as the eagle, they're going to be stubble. Right. Let's see what he says. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. Uh -huh. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. Why? For the Lord have spoken it. What the Bible just say? The Bible says that he's going to wipe these people off the face of the earth. Right, oh, right. Bring it out. You didn't even know that was in the Bible. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 